finally we're in a position to discover the real power of this uh, theorem that we've called the variational theorem uh, and, and use a fully variational approach. And by the end of this little lecture, we'll understand what that means. So what we've seen that is that regardless of whether we know the right solution to Schrodinger's equation or not, if we know a guess, if we have a guess at the solution, we can calculate the variational energy for that trial solution. And the variational theorem tells us that the variational energy of any function is going to be at least as large as the ground state energy of the wave function itself. So let's work an example. Uh, the harmonic oscillator. So just as a reminder, um, the harmonic oscillator, a problem where the energy is, is quadratic, 1 half kx squared for the potential energy. If I graph the wave function, That was a uh, system for which we could solve Schrodinger's equation. And we found that the ground state wave function um, is, uh, looks like a Gaussian, e to the minus some constant times x squared. And the energy, the ground state energy for the harmonic oscillator is what we call the zero opponent energy, 1 half h nu. So that's just a reminder of what we already know about the harmonic oscillator. Let's suppose we didn't know this and we want to understand how to use this variational approach, we can say, um, let's perhaps we say we know the general shape of the wave function, but we don't know that it's a Gaussian. We can say instead that, just like we did with an earlier example for the particle in a box, let's say we use a parabola, an upside down parabola, to represent the shape of this wave function. So uh, this wave function, we're going to say, it's got zeros, let's say, at minus lambda and lambda. I don't know what those values are. We'll talk more about that shortly. But uh, the, if it's got two zeros, one at negative lambda, one at positive lambda, and it's a parabola, the function is going to look like something like that. It's an upside down parabola, so I'll stick a negative sign in front of it. So that function is going to look like. If I, if I take a guess that my trial function is lambda squared minus x squared, then uh, that's what I'm going to use for my trial function. And right now, I won't take a guess for the value of lambda. What I'll do is say, well, perhaps lambda, lambda could be a small number, in which case my wave function would look like that. Or perhaps lambda is a large number, in which case my wave function would look like that. I'll save until later on uh, the decision of how big to make lambda. So right now, I'm just going to leave lambda is the, in there as a variable. The question is, how good or bad is that guess that I've made for that variational uh, trial function? So we can go back to the variational theorem, and we can say the energy of that particular uh, guess for the wave function is uh, this numerator over the denominator. Uh, we can calculate those one at a time. The denominator, the overlap integral between the trial function and itself, its own complex conjugate. In this case, we don't have to worry about the complex conjugate because there's no complex numbers in my wave function. So I'll just write down that what that looks like is lambda squared minus x squared for the trial function times the same thing for the trial function again. If I do that integral from lambda, negative lambda to positive lambda, and then for this example, we'll skip the algebra. Uh, and focus on the big picture so we don't get caught up in the details of the, of the calculus and the algebra of solving for this result. We get some result for the denominator of this function. If we do the same thing for the numerator, sandwiching the Hamiltonian in between these two versions of the trial wave function, just to write down what that would look like, the integral we would be solving. I've got lambda squared minus x squared for psi star. The Hamiltonian, remember I need to use the Hamiltonian for the harmonic oscillator problem. So that looked like a kinetic energy term, h squared over 8 pi squared mu squared second derivative. That's the kinetic energy. And then the kinetic, uh, the potential energy uh, looked like 1 half kx squared. That potential and kinetic energy terms are both multiplying the wave function again. And if I integrate that result, 
from negative lambda to positive lambda, I'll get some other expression involving uh, lambdas and a bunch of fundamental constants. If I then take the numerator divided by the denominator as described by the variational equation, then the net result, again skipping all the algebra, is going to be You can, if you want a, a little algebra challenge, you can double check this result by doing the integrals that I've laid out above. So that turns out to have two different terms. So if I plug in this numerator, which has a kinetic energy piece and a potential energy piece, divided by the denominator, which is just one expression, I have the result we see here. which again I can break down into one piece that comes from the kinetic energy and one piece that comes from the potential energy. So what we see is that the total energy of this trial function depends on the value of lambda. If I choose a very small value of lambda so the function is very sharply peaked, it goes up very quickly and down very quickly, that function has a, a large kinetic energy because it has a large curvature. But if lambda is very small, the potential energy is very low. By confining the particle near the origin to small values of x, I've confined it to the near the minimum of my um, uh, harmonic oscillator potential well. So I can make the function have a very low potential energy at the expense of having a relatively high kinetic energy, or I can do the opposite. If lambda is a large number and I've got a very broad wave function, then the kinetic energy is very small. When, when lambda is large, 1 over lambda squared is small, so the kinetic energy is quite low because this function has very little curvature. But by r allowing the particle to exist very far away from the origin at regions of my harmonic oscillator potential well that have a lot of energy, I've given it a lot of potential energy. So if I think about what that means about the trial variational energy as a function of the lambda value that I choose, if I graph, graph this function, 1 over lambda squared plus lambda squared times some constants, it's going to have this general type of shape. I can either, for very small lambda, uh, this term blows up. For a large lambda, the potential energy term blows up. There's going to be some value in the middle that's the ideal value, the optimal value of lambda that gives us the lowest possible variational energy. So. This is the real value of using this variational approach. Remember that what we, regardless of what function we plug in here, the variational energy is always greater than uh, the true ground state energy. So the value of lambda that we can plug in to give us the lowest possible variational energy, uh, this is not guaranteed to be the same as the ground state energy of the true wave function, but it's at least going to be an upper bound on that true variational energy. So I'd much rather guess this value than guess any of the, the larger values with different lambdas. So again, skipping the details, what I want to do is if I find the lambda value for which the derivative of the variational energy with respect to lambda reaches zero, I found the minimum of this function. And if we work through the algebra, so I have an expression here. I could take the derivative with respect to lambda. I can set it equal to 0. I can solve for the value of lambda that makes that function at a minimum. And what I find is that optimal value of lambda works out to be some not particularly interesting collection of constants. So uh, that particular collection of constants, some numbers and constants raised to the 1 fourth power. But then, if I take that value of lambda, plug it back into the expression for my variational energy, what I find is that the energy, that lowest possible value, if I evaluate it at lambda star, what I find is that energy is a different collection of constants. So root 10 over 7, 1 half times h over 2 pi root k over mu. And the reason I've written it in that particular way is uh, 
h over 2 pi root k over mu, that's exactly the same thing as h nu. So 1 half h nu happens to be the same thing as the ground state energy. So what we've discovered is that the lowest with this trial function guess, with a parabola as our guess for the wave function for the harmonic oscillator, the lowest I can get the energy to be is square root of 10 over 7 times the true ground state energy. And you can't see that off the bottom of the board. The lowest is square root of 10 over 7 times the ground state energy, or square root of 10 over 7 is about 1.195. So because a parabola is not actually the correct wave function for a harmonic oscillator, it's actually a reasonable guess, but not a terribly good guess. The lowest I can get the energy with a parabola as my trial wave function is about 20% larger than the ground state energy. Clearly, if I had guessed a Gaussian for the, wave, the, the ground state wave function, then I would have been able to recover the true ground state energy. With this particular guess, I can only recover within about 20% of the ground state energy. But this example, the main point of this example is not the numbers. The main point of this example is to point out the, the most powerful thing we can do with this variational expression, which is not just to trial and error guess many different functions one at a time, but if we guess a function that, and leave it expressed in terms of some variable, we can then vary that variable. We can say what among all the different values of lambda gives me the lowest possible uh, energy, and by varying that variable, and then we've used this variational approach to its full extent, and we can find out the best thing I can do with a parabola and the closest approach I can get to the true ground state energy.